Captain and Tangela too. And our host, Vincent Van Dahl. And he brings it to ya! Creature features! And all creatures! Good evening and welcome to Creature Features. Our show is a silly little program that presents a film, which is often somewhat rather meager, combined with a guest that is quite often most special. I'm your host Vincent, this is your host Tangella, and over here would be Mr. Livingston, who will ensure that the presentation runs smoothly and that no eyes shall be poked out with sharp objects for the duration of the program. Tonight, we'll have an extra special presentation as our guest this evening will be Batman. Did I just read that correctly? The Batman? The real Batman was not available. Tangella found this one. He goes by the moniker Bargain Store Batman. He's quite well known at a variety of county fairs. How interesting. But I've not been provided with any background on this bloke. I'm not entirely sure what to say about him. Jingle bells, Batman smells, Robin laid an egg. Batmobile lost a wheel and the Joker got away. What is this, some type of vile poetry? It is an American child's rhyme often sung in elementary schoolyards during the Christmas season. I hope to God you did not book Robin, compelling us to witness this ghastly egg-laying feat of his. Good. Guess this he's aside, we do have a fantastic film tonight for which we've never yet shown. The Disappearance of Flight 412, starring Glenn Ford, Bradford Dillman, and David Soul. This movie capitalized on the UFO spate, which occurred all over America in the early 1970s. If you happen to be into alien technology, little green men, battles in the sky with missiles, and laser beams... You'll see none of that in tonight's film. I really must stop allowing him to preview the film before I make my introductory pitch. In any case, don't go away, for it shall be another night of Batman UFO Fright, right here on Creature Features! Believe this is yours? Stay tuned. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. This brief moment of tranquility has been brought to you by Nightscape. Relax and sleep better every single night with this and other videos from our free YouTube channel. Learn more by visiting nightscape.co today. Welcome to Creature Features. It's that time of the week, our favorite time of the week, or it might be the bat time. We're going to find out in a moment, but uh, thank you for watching our show tonight. Uh, we know you could be watching that other movie show. What other movie shows are there besides ours? Batman. Yes, the Batman show. You could be watching the Batman show, but you're not. You're watching our show with Batman, which is even better. So thank you for watching. And I'm with the Batman. I'm Batman. Uh, you know, I was told 
that you go by the bargain store Batman. Is that accurate? Okay. Bargain store Batman. So if you do a film, they don't pay you as much as say, say. Pay? Michael, Michael, you what's his paid? name? Paid, right. No, if you got paid for doing a film. So anyways, uh, bargain store Batman. How was the uh, drive out? Uh, well, it was pretty good, but you know, it was raining. Well, you know, it always rains out here. What's the problem with rain? Well, you know, I do drive a convertible. That's a good point. You don't have like a little tonneau cover that like covers your, no? So I asked Alfred many times. All right. So uh, anyways, we've got Batman with us tonight. He's going to answer all of our questions about Batman, I hope, the ones he can answer. And we're going to watch The Disappearance of Flight 412. Have you seen this UFO film? Oh, yes. And you like it? Yeah. David yeah. Soul from Starsky and Hutch. Starsky and Hutch. They were crime fighters as well, were they not? Yeah. Know them well. Right. So he fights crime. The stars of this film fight crime. It's going to be a crime-ridden night, I think, or rid of crime night. Yes. We'll see. All right. So stay where you are. Don't go away. And uh, when we come back, uh, we're going to talk to Batman. Here's the movie. Bye. This is a UFO an unidentified flying object. It was photographed at Santa Catalina Island in April of 1966. Look at it again, closely. Hundreds, even thousands of witnesses have seen similar things appear in the sky. Persons living miles from others have testified independently that UFOs have appeared in a specific place at a specific time. I looked up in the sky and object standing real still then it was going too slow to be an airplane or a helicopter it was a large opaque light it had a, a dull glow to it it was larger than a car flying at treetop level from our height here the official position is firm the evidence is erroneous illusory but if in 1,000 reported sightings one-tenth of one percent could be fact then that is one real existing UFO. Colonel Moore. Morning. Uh, Major Dunning said he'd meet you at the flight line with 412. Very well. Early morning, a summer day. Before it was over, Colonel Pete Moore and five men of the 458th Radar Test Unit knew they would never forget it. It all began with a basically routine but crucial mission involving the alignment of sophisticated airborne radar systems essential to the ultimate defense of the nation. The equipment had a recent history of unreliability. This reflected on Pete Moore and on his men. He was concerned. Okay. Colonel, uh, you'll hook up with uh, Blanco Vista Marine Air at 1200, and once they got you, you'll be designated Shadow Delta One. Are there any questions? No, oh, sir. We've got it. Anything that you'd like to add, Colonel? I know I'll be in touch with Colonel Barnes at Blanco Vista. I'll see you men back here at 1400 for debriefing. 1400, there goes lunch, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, pre-flight inspection. Plated. Circuit breakers. And hey, what about the radar? Fix, they pinpointed it last night. We won't have another abort. Oh, I hope not. And what about the general? I covered us. Oh, you did, huh? Well, how come he chewed me out before breakfast? <laughs> well, this time we got the first team up. Hey, how about some lunch? I'm meeting the wife. Uh, say hello to Nina for me, will you? This mission is going to put my heart through a ringer. Well, you know, if we flub this, man, it's going to be more than your heart that's going to be put through a ringer. <laughs> no, I know. Traffic control. You're cleared to taxi to runway six right. 
Gypsy 92 is holding short. Roger, ATC. Have it in view. 402, you're clear to Spio, clear to Blanco Vista. Maintain flight level 310, heading 097. Departure frequency will be 124.6. Squawk code 3138 for departure. You're clear for takeoff. Roger, Whitney. Squawk 3138. We are cleared to take off. Monitor the throttle. Rotate. As 412 climbed gracefully to altitude and the beginning of the exercise, Pete Moore arrived at the 458th headquarters, his office. Morning, Colonel. Good morning. That was Wing again. They're really starting to press on our roster updates. Oh, that'll have to wait. Well, get me uh, Colonel Barnes at Blanco Vista Marina, will you? Yes, sir. Right away. Colonel Barnes. Hey, Freeman. <laughs> How's it going? Well, fine. We're right on schedule. Say, hey, when are we going to play a little golf? Oh, I'll get down there one of these days. Uh, hey, don't let your guy slip up this time, you hear? Well, you sound a little concerned. Well, General Enright is on my tail this time. We won't let you down, Pete. Okay, thanks. Oh, I'll leave word where you can reach me. Uh, keep me posted, though, will you? Right. Whitney ATC, this is 412. Verify we're climbing out. Roger, 412. Amend your clearance. Climb and maintain flight level 370. Engage your autopilot. Well, 12 more days of this, and we got 89 days in England. Hey, Ferguson, you ever been overseas? Just Vietnam, sir. <laughs> oh, Ferguson. Uh, it's not at all like England. Check hydraulic pressure. 1500 PSI. Blanco Vista Control, this is Air Force 412. Commencing operation Shadow Delta One. We are maintaining flight level 370. Shadow Delta One, this is Blanco Vista Marine Radar Control. We have you passing through our outboard markers. Flight 412 easily assumed its new designation, Shadow Delta One. As the routine exercise began, Shadow Delta One became something else. The hunted. What's that? Hey, Smitty, check with Norad on these. Shadow Delta One, stand by. Shadow Delta One, activate all radar units. Repeat, activate all radar units on overhead scan. Ferguson, Pedriski, you got that? Yeah, we got it. Yeah, I got the lights. There's supposed to be a ground response test. What's going on? Shadow Delta One, check your upper left quadrant. Roger, copy. I'm gonna have a look. This is Blanco Vista Marine Air. All aircraft to this vicinity squawk transponders. Repeat, squawk your codes. Roger, copy. I right, Clint. Put it on fast scan. Blanca Vista, this is Shadow Delta One. We see three blips at 11 o'clock. Shadow Delta One, we copy. Unit two confirming. To the experienced men at Blanco Vista Marine Radar, the blips were real. Therefore, what they represented was real. Lieutenant, take a look at this. We just checked with North American Air Defense Command. There's no plot on that. It's not supposed to be any planes in that sector at all. Malfunctions? No. Hey, what are those things? I'll tell you one thing, guys. Whatever they are, they are pacing us. Shadow Delta One, move up as close as you can within your operational altitude. We're going to scramble for a look. Roger, we're going up. Coming off autopilot. Attention, already squadrons. Pilots, man your planes. 
Scramble red. Scramble red. This is not a drill. Repeat, this is not a drill. Set pressurization 42,000. Pressurization 42,000. The men of Blanco Vista were trained and ready. It was their fastest scramble on record. Guests of the show stay at Hotel E on Courthouse Square in Santa Rosa. Welcome back to Creature Features. If you're just joining us, we are watching the disappearance of Flight 412 with our friend, the bargain store Batman. So uh, before we chat about Batman, this film, have you noticed that there seems to be an abundance of stock military footage? Yeah. Yeah, you'd think they'd actually go out and film some of their own instead of using like things they, they obtained from NASA, would they not? Yeah, we use it all the time. Yeah. All right, all right. Anyways, uh, so we'll get back to the film in a moment, but uh, Mr. Batman, I want to ask you, you know, I understand you do fight crime. Yes. And, you know, I was just wondering what kind of crimes a bargain store Batman would, would fight. They only allow me to do certain things. So I'm in charge of making sure that those people are held responsible for taking off the tags off the mattresses and the pillows. Oh, like the mattresses that says do not you remove. You cannot take them off. Oh. Yeah, well, I don't think we I don't think we've removed any here, so you will find not this crime committed in this household. The other thing is recyclables. Recycling. Right. Recycling is a crime. Do not put the cans in the non-recyclable can. Oh, right. Now you want to separate your trash in the rubbish bin, in the proper bin. Yes. Right. You want to put the cans in the, the proper bin. I have to check it all out by hand. Right, right. So, so somebody could be driving around Windsor, Santa Rosa, I presume, and see you checking garbage cans. Sometimes I think I'm trying to steal the recyclables. I go, I'm Batman, I don't steal. No, no, that makes sense. That makes absolute sense. So suppose you capture one of these fiends in the act. What, what, what do you do? Simply tie him up and call the commissioner. Commissioner Gordon. Of course. Commissioner Gordon. So, so is it a bargain store, Commissioner Gordon? Of course. Yeah. All right. All right. Good. Good. All right. What do you say we get back to this film? And when we get back, I want to s speak about this vehicle of yours, the Batmobile. Yes. Because I've heard nice things about it. The 1966 Batmobile is the best car ever. All right. Made. We're going to hear everything about it. But first, let's get back to the disappearance of flight. Four, one, two. Don't go away. Shadow Delta One, your blips at 11 o'clock are unidentified. Repeat, unidentified. NORAD has no plot on them, and they are not responding to voice communication. All right, we're leveling. Petrusky, give me an idea where these guys are. I can't see things. Uh, see things now at 41,000. Targets at 75,000. They're way up there. Way up. Blanco Vista. We're climbing out. 20,000 feet. Roger, Tango 1. Tango 2 is confirming. Activating onboard weapons. Kaprisky, how do we stand? Uh, speed 500, altitude 42,000, and holding. Tango 1 passing through 25,000. Tango 1, Tango 2. We're handing you over to radar control. Roger. Starting attack approach now. Here come the Marines. Wow. Look at them haul. Tango 1, turning now. Roger, Tango 1. I'm on your tail. One and Tango 
2 approaching 40. Hey, where'd they go? They're gone. UFOs are gone. What? Nothing. Tango 1, this is Blanco Vista. Come in, please. Over. Petrescu, tell Roy those jets that never came through the cloud, they're gone. What does Rick say? Rick said that they never came through the cloud. Tango 1. Tango 2. Come in, please. Come in, please. Tango 1. Tango 2. Do you copy? Do you copy? Hey, my God. Tango 1. Tango 2. Come in, please. Come in, please. Do you copy? Do you copy? At Blanco Vista, what had started as simple routine had become the unbelievable. The men were stunned, shaken. Higher command was notified. Blanco Vista is coming on. Shadow Delta One, you will hold at 42,000 feet and await further orders. Blanco Vista, this is Shadow Delta One. We have lost contact with your jets. We see no shoots and no debris. We are swinging back to search. Over. That is a negative, Shadow Delta One. This mission is scrubbed. Do not deviate from your pattern. Our people are on the way. Oh, honey, I've got to go. Do you feel like barbecuing tonight? Oh, sure, why not? Let's have shish kebab for a change, huh? But then I've got to get some tomatoes and onions, onions and... Mushrooms. Mushrooms. Hey, excuse me, Nina. Uh, Pete, the balloon's just gone up. What? Our communications people have just monitored the damnedest crosstalk you ever heard. Quote, this is Shadow Delta One. We have lost contact with your jets. We see no shoots and no debris. Swinging back to search, unquote. And what was the reply? Completely unintelligible. Nobody could dig it out. Honey, I, I have to leave. Okay. No, I'll call you later. Okay. As Pete Moore left the comfortable surroundings of the base cafeteria, Shadow Delta One was about to chart a course for a strange and unknown destination. Air Force 412, this is NORAD Communications. You are being handed off to Digger Control. Repeat, Digger Control. This is a security transfer. Your new frequency will be Command Channel D. Do you copy? Roger, NORAD. Switching over. Switching Channel D. On Channel D. Digger. Beats me. Hey, you guys. Are we going to stay up here all day? Huh? Listen, I got another bologna sandwich back there, if any of you guys want it. <laughs> you want it, Freddy? Huh? Air Force 412, this is Digger Control. Do not acknowledge radio communication from this point on. Come to course 074, maintain present flight level and airspeed for 30 minutes. Set 074. 074, set. All right, see if you can reach Enright. Tell him we're in trouble again. Okay. I'll raise uh, 412. Oh, Mike, listen, uh, get a hold of Freeman Barnes, will you, at Blanco Vista? Have him call me. What do I do about this transmission? Read it to the general. Sergeant, raise 412 for me, will you? Well, Colonel, I don't think we can do that. They've been handed off to the North American Air Defense Command. No, Red? When? Just a few minutes ago. We'll try anyway. Yes, sir. Shadow Delta One, this is Whitney Communications. Do you read me? Shadow Delta One, this is Whitney Calm. Whitney Calm, please respond. All right, if uh, Major Dunning shows up, tell him I'm in base operations, okay? Oh, right, sir.
This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. This portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Oh, look at that. They even have little wings. Now, I think she could fly with those. Don't you? Bat boots. Bat boots. Perhaps. Welcome back to the show. Uh, we are doing the whole Batman thing tonight. She's Batgirl. But uh, Batman stepped away for a moment because our friends at home send us mail and we have to read it, right? Indeed. It would, it would be improper if we did not. So let's read some mail and then we'll get Batman back here after the next segment of our film. What do you got, Mr. Livingston? Steve and Celeste from Tulsa, Oklahoma. How are you, sir? I'm quite well. Are you recovered from all the holiday festivities? No. Well, you know, maybe this letter will help. It's called An Absurd Greeting. And, oh, look, it's a lighthouse. I, I like lighthouses. Hmm. You know, we don't have any lighthouses around here. You'd think Bodega Bay with all the rocks. There would be a bloody lighthouse someplace, and there isn't one. I'm surprised Tulsa, Oklahoma has a lighthouse. Maybe it's, maybe it's on a lake. Oklahoma has lakes. Hmm. I don't know. Don't, don't confuse me with your logic and reason. All right, the card says, hoping that the light of Christmas leads you to smooth sailing throughout the new year. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to Vince, Miss Livingston, and Tangela. He calls you the damsel of distress. That there is much truth to this. From Steve and Celeste. Thank you so much, Steve and Celeste. And uh, another reminder, we're reading Christmas cards tonight a little bit late because, um, you know, we don't check our box too often. So people send these to us right before Christmas. And by the time we get them out of the mailbox, it's a few weeks into the new year, right? Indeed. It's what we do, but it's fun. What in God's name is that? This is from Fort Bragg, California. Fort Bragg? Oh, I don't want that put on my... Put it on her, let her open it, and I shall read the notes. How's that sound? It's quite heavy. Oh, it's to Tangella. This directly to Tangella. All right, it looks like some type of poetry. Tangella, shall, how, shall I compare thee to a winter's day? Thou art more fierce and more lovely. Rough winds carry my heart away. Wish winter would last eternity. Can mortal man catch the wind with words and deeds and chivalry? Oh, good God, what in it's God's a, name is that? It is a dragon's head. A dragon's head. With words and deeds and chivalry, sword drawn, I gallop towards dragon fire, and now the creature's head is my gift to thee. Your humble servant, Sir J. Dread Knight of the Northland Realm. Postscript. I really love the show. You guys are awesome. Thank you so incredibly for bringing... Fun film and fright to Saturday night. Well, thank you, sir. Who is this bloke? I don't have his name. I just have his moniker of Sir J. Sir Dread J. Knight. Doesn't say? All no. right. No, we'll just call him Sir J. Dread Knight of the Northland Realm. You know, I've heard about the Northland Realm, and I've heard they're quite devious and cunning. So keep it up, old man. All it says is J. J? All right. That it? No, I have three here from... Matthew and Sean. Three from the same people. I believe so. Matthew but, and Sean Mesa. But for each of us. In Pacheco, California. Oh, there's one for each of us. And you look at these, what do they say? I'll leave it up to you. You know, I should hire a, an actual screener because you don't do much screening on the show, do you? Something should be left as a surprise. He's just looking for bombs and poisons. That's all he does. All right. Uh, let's see. Warmest wishes for a season of love, peace, and joy. Sincerely, Matthew and Sean Mesa. We think 
Creature Features is great since the late Bob Wilkins. Okay, that was to me. And then the next one is to Mr. Livingston. Another car. Oh, you got the cute one. How did that work out? You should have gotten this one because that looks more like you. The card All right. Mm. Have a holly jolly Christmas this year. Sincerely, Matthew and Sean. Creature Features is great. See, he sent that to you because you don't think it's great. So he wants you to know it is great. Oh, dear. This, this man lacks complete enthusiasm. All right, this one's got a nice doorway. And this one's to Tangella. This is for you. I shall read it for you since you will not read on the air. Wishing you a very Merry Christmas and all the best in the coming years. Sincerely, Matthew and Sean Mesa. P.S. We think Creature Features is great. So... You know, she already knows Creature Features is great, so you don't have to tell her. But this one, he does not know. Is that it for mail? That would be it. That is it for mail. If you'd like to send us email, which we did not read any tonight, did we? Not tonight. All right. Uh, next week, we'll read some email. If you want to send us email, send it to the address you see right here. If you'd like to send us a large box with a dragon's head, send it to the postal address you see right here. We're going to get back to the disappearance of Flight 412. And when we come back, we're going to have Batman with us once again. Don't go away. Okay, 412 has been diverted to Hollowell Air Force Base. Wyoming. Yes, sir, diverted. It says right there. This came from uh, NORAD? Yes, sir. Anything else I can do for you, sir? No. Pete, I couldn't get anywhere near it, right? You know, for something that's so hot, we sure seem to be getting shoved on the back burner. Well, what about Barnes? Something's cock out of Blanca Vista, too. Can't get through. Then we'd better patch it in Norad. tracked Shadow Delta-1 until it disappeared. 412, this is Digger Control. You are 20 miles from touchdown. Oh, yeah. I put it on the speaker. Uh, yeah, do you have a plot on Air Force 412 out of Whitney being diverted from Blanco Vista to Hollywell? Yes, we do, Colonel. Uh, ETA 1430. Well, who authorized that diversion? Well, that's all I can give you, Colonel. I suggest you contact Blanca Vista. Well, I'll do that. Look, we picked up part of a transmission, something about uh, 412 losing contact with some marine jets. Have you got anything on that? No, sir. Again, you'd better contact Blanco Vista. Very well. Now, look, if you get anything on that plane, you holler for me before you holler for anyone else, you hear? Yes, sir. Oh, and uh, contact Hollywood and have Bishop call me just as soon as he gets in. Okay, where do I find you? In my office. I gotta get a hold of Barnes. Four one two, this is Digger Control. You were two miles from touchdown. Hey, Roy, listen, I don't show anything on my charts at all. Just uh, one gunnery range about 100 miles east of here. Well, there's something down there. 412, make your approach from course 105. Repeat 105. If 
be on your final. Touchdown on one way one zero. Alternators, inverters. Off, off, off. Battery switch. Off. Let's find out what this is all about. My name's Trotman. Will you come with me? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Before these guys haul away my aircraft, I want to know who's doing it. I am. SID. Special Intelligence Detachment. Detached from what? Work for the same people you do, just a different division. Let's get in the truck. Bishop and his men did not question their surroundings nor the orders given them. They had been trained to obey, training they would find difficult to contradict. Shabby Officers Club. Well, they got air conditioning? They got vents. Well, I hope they turn it on. Yeah. Let them sweat for about 15 minutes, then go. Yo. Colonel Barnes. Hey, Freeman. <laughs> you know, you got a hell of a phone situation down there. I've been trying to reach you all afternoon. Your plane's okay. Yeah, well, we've had quite a morning down here, just getting the pieces sorted out. We had a radio transmission that there's... Well, there might have been some kind of mid-air collision. No, no, not at all. It's those radar systems we've been tinkering with all week. We just had a complete failure of all ground and air units and their backups. All of them at the same time? Well, that's the way it appears. Actually, your plane has been rerouted to Hollowell. But our people definitely says something about debris in a search. Well, we had two planes up there, too. They've also been rerouted to Hollowell. I see. Okay. Thanks, sir. You bet.
Come in. Well, that does it. Hallowell has absolutely no word at all on 412. What? I mean, they're not expecting our plane. No time, no how. Well, I just got confirmation from Barnes. Yeah, where'd he get it? We saw it on the board at base operations. Somebody didn't get the word to Wyoming. Radar. Why didn't we go there in the first place? Come on. 458, Sergeant Pierce. Just a moment, sir. Yeah. Base ops at Hallowell, on the line. It's Colonel Moore. Oh, I see. Well, have uh, Captain Bishop call me as soon as he gets in. Come outside. You know, Hollywood just confirmed that 412 is due in at 1430. It's the middle of summer, and here we are in a snowstorm. You don't think the plane went down, do you? Oh, no, no. Nobody would try to cover a thing like that up. But somebody is up to something, and I am going to find out what it is. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by... The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. I'm your bargain basement Batman. I'm your bargain basement Batman because I don't have a bat cave, I just have a basement. Anyhow, this is my 1966 Batmobile. It has a rocket launcher, it has a bat phone, it has a bat computer, it has a bat fire extinguisher, it has grappling hooks. It has everything bat because bat is beautiful. Anyhow, this thing just is so fast, it has a turbine engine, goes 275 miles per hour. It's the fastest thing on the road. Your bargain basement Batman is the best Batman because he's got bat-like reflexes. He's always looking out for crime. He's always fighting crime. He's aware of crime, whatever it happens. Welcome back to Creature Features. It is Batman Night here on Creature Features because we've got the bargain store Batman with us to watch the disappearance of Flight 412. Quickly on this movie, I'm confused, Mr. Batman, because the film is called The Disappearance of Flight 412, but Flight 412 has not disappeared. No. But the two jets. Right. That makes no sense to me. I don't get it. Why would they call it the disappearance of flight? It should be called the disappearance of flight 412's request for two jets to go look at UFOs. Right. Perhaps they just could not fit that on the poster. That's, that's my theory. I could be wrong. Anyways, uh, enough about this movie. We'll get back to it in a moment. Let's talk about the Batmobile. I love this vehicle. You know, we, we got to look at the Batmobile. And uh, we won't talk about that, right? at the moment but uh, uh we've got a few photos we're going to show over we're going to overlay here but uh this is a beautiful vehicle you know i i thought the bargain store batman would be driving something less batman batmobile like oh it's got to be the 66 batmobile it's the only batmobile 66 so when they came out with the 67 batmobile was something different there's no 67. There's no 68. 
No 67, no 68. And there's no 65, I presume. No. So it's a 66 Batmobile. All right, all right. So how fast can this vehicle go? Uphill or downhill? I imagine both, but say downhill. Well, it could go about 1,000 miles per hour, but I have to limit myself to the speed limit. Oh, so he not only enforces the law, he obeys it, which I suppose that's important, but you, you've got like a siren on the top. Couldn't you simply flip the switch and... And I do. I mean, what if a criminal is doing five miles over the speed limit? I'll pull him over. No. Time up, call Commissioner Gordon. Oh. Well, that seems like there'd be more that you could do with a vehicle like that. All right, so um, one of the other things I want to ask you about was the ejector seat on that. How do you control that? The ejector seat? That's 007, James Bond. Oh. Well, I, I would presume that uh, your car would be somewhat equivalent to the, the Bond car. No ejector seat. What am I going to do, eject Robin out? No. I suppose that might be acceptable if he's laying eggs. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, tell you what. Let's chat about Robin when we return. And uh, right now, let's uh, return to this uh, film, Disappearance of Flight 412. Find out what happens next. And uh, uh, when we come back, we will talk some more about uh, Batman and his uh, amazing Batmobile. So you stay. You stay. And uh, I'm stuck here. So see you soon. Investigation. Nothing you say will be held against you or used as evidence to incriminate you in any way whatsoever. You will now be interrogated by the SID. Ferguson, who made the original sighting? Marines at Blanco Vista, sir. No, wait, look, you don't have to call me, sir. They ask us to activate our radar and to look at a certain sector of the sky. What did you see? Well, Pedrisky reported three dots at 11 o'clock, and I confirmed. Is that what Blanca Vista saw? Oh, well, yeah, they gave us the coordinate. That's what you reported, but they never said they saw it, did they? <laughs> well, they must have seen something. You see, there's no confirmation on that. Something appeared, and then it disappeared. Maybe it wasn't even there at all. We want to know everything you thought you saw. What do you thought? We're getting reports in from the Marines who are checking their equipment for misalignment. Misalignment? What do you mean, misalignment? They're bringing their radar people in to go over the big dish. They're sort of steam. They don't much like it when things go wrong. Yeah, well, I, I can understand that. I wouldn't either if I just lost two jets. And those Mark IX radar sets? I get stories all the time about malfunctions. You know, wait, what do you mean, malfunction? Now, something snatched two jets right out of the damn sky. We agree. Three blips appeared and then disappeared. And so did the two marine jets, and they're not supposed to. You saw them disappear? On the radar scope. Get Riggs in here. He saw them go. Well, now listen. Let me tell you something about the reliability of now the look, radar. Now, look. Yeah. The facts are simple. Blanco Vista saw three blips. We saw the blips. They scrambled two jets. The jets disappeared. The blips disappeared. Now. What are you going to do about it? Now, let's go back over some of the details. What are we going to tell Enright? I don't know. 
Oh, Sergeant? Yes, sir. I understand you were tracking 412 this morning. Did you track it as far up as uh, Hollywell? Uh, no, they went east. East? Yes, sir. Norton handed them off to somebody called Digger Control. Um, what is Digger Control? I don't know, Colonel, but Norton handled it. And did you track them after that? Yes, sir. They turned to course 074 and took off in the desert due east until I lost them. What do you mean you lost them? Well, they dropped off the scope when they got near the mountains. You lost radar contact, and you didn't tell anybody. Major, Digger Control had 412. I only tracked them because they're heading. What do you mean? Curiosity. I've been stationed here 14 months, and I've never seen anything flown through that area. All right, can you pinpoint it for me? Sure can, Colonel. OK. So what, what are you talking? Richard's standing right here. Now, now he saw the jets disappear. Why don't you ask him? Huh? We're talking about blips. <laughs> Boy, I'm, no, really. <laughs> Boy, you guys, you really have tunnel vision, don't you? Huh? You really do? <sighs> OK. OK, I'll tell you how we can settle this whole thing. How? All right. You bring in an expert on radar and an expert on aeronautics, and you let us talk to them. What would you tell them? Well, aside from the most important part, namely that Riggs got a visual on two marine jets just snapping right out of the sky, I saw three radar blips make a right angle turn in midair and move off the scope at about 5,000 miles per hour. Now, those experts could tell you that no known flying machine or bird of any sort can make such a turn, that nothing known to science can accelerate from 500 to 5,000 in one second flat. Now, that is what I saw. You can ask Riggs what he saw. OK, Clifford, what did you see? I saw two marine interceptors climbing forward of us. Now, they flew into a cloud, and they never came out. OK, how thick was the cloud? Seven, eight hundred feet. OK, we have two marine jets moving at better than 900 plus. They should have punched through that cloud less than three or four seconds. Did they? Well, I just told you they didn't. Well, what did your scope show? Exactly what he saw. The jets disappeared, and so did those other things. They just. But you didn't see that. You only saw your scopes. It blips on and off. Tony, this is sounding more and more like electronic malfunction. That's exactly what you were sent up there to check out. Well, then Blanco Vista must have had the same malfunction we did. Yeah, and they're checking that out. Well, they better take a nose count on their jets because they are going to come up too short. We have no report of two jets missing. I'll be very happy to make one. Look, Cliff. You suffered a trick of the eye. Now, if two jets went down in that area, we'd know about it, and we don't. They didn't go down. They just went. Nothing does that. Well, that's what I'm trying to tell you. And I'm trying to tell you that we don't deal in science fiction. Now, course 074 would have put them on this heading right here. That means they would have gone in here, popped over these mountains. And back onto radar. Yes, but they didn't. So they must be here somewhere. But you know something? They wouldn't travel at low altitudes for very long. They must have landed. Well, not on sand. There's got to be a base, no. uh, an airstrip. Wait a minute, Mike. There's, there's dirt roads here. Look, we've got a gunnery range here, right with an airstrip. No, they didn't get that far. Not over these mountains. Yeah. Well, no symbols. Uh, you got a base director. Yes, it's on the shelf there. It's Colonel Moore. Pete. It's Freeman Barnes. How's it going? Lousy. Maybe if you're open tomorrow, we could have lunch. Huh? Just the two of us, a little chat. Yeah, well, I'm not going to be free. Well, then tonight, maybe. I'm very sorry. I really am busy. Can I call you back? No, look, Pete. They've sealed up Blanca Vista. A security alert? Yeah, kind of. They've pulled my radar people off the line. Why? Pete, have you got your people back yet? No. Freeman, did the alert have anything to do with that uh, radio transmission we picked up about losing contact with your jets? We've lost them. They've disappeared, vanished. What? Off the scopes without a trace. Is that why they pulled your radar people? Pete, I suppose you know this is standard procedure for UFO sightings. 
Why didn't you tell me about this before? Pete, I couldn't speak freely before. Yeah, well, what is the connection between that and 412? I don't know. That determination is in other hands. Whose? Special intelligence. Well, now, you know that's very strange. Everybody's operating on a strictly need-to-know basis. Well, I need to know more than that. Pete, I don't know how you're going to handle this, but... Well, if it ever comes up, I never made this phone call. What do you mean about radar people? Look, we're we're just trying to find our men, right? Well, I've done this. Yeah. Pullman Marine Air Station deactivated 1954. Didn't even on the map anymore. Yeah. Okay, that's my contribution. Now tell me what Barnes said. No, later. How are you at Desert Survival? We're going out there? Well, what are we going to tell the general? Well, if we do find our people, I'm going to tell him plenty. I don't know what we're going to do when we get there. We're going to get our men out. If they're there. You think we can just uh, walk in and say, excuse me, these are mine, and walk out again? Pete, somebody went to a lot of trouble to keep this secret. Uh, that's for sure. What was Barnes talking about? Well, it seems that uh, 412 tangled with a UFO. Yeah. Pete? Hmm? Let's go back. The men are okay. I know they are. How do you know that? Because I was involved in something like this two years ago. UFO situation. And what happened? Oh, they really raked us over the coals. They convinced us that we didn't see a thing. And they made it perfectly clear we were involved in the national security situation. Oh, come on. Well, look, I know how you feel about the men. I respect you for that. But I'm telling you, back off now. For my own good, I can't back off now. Hi, my name is Trina. I'm calling from San Jose, California. And I like Godzilla and King Kong movies. Thank you. Hello, this is Livingston. Apparently, one of my newly acquired domestic duties is to request help for our show financially by asking you to visit our patron page. Your generosity will help keep Creature Features on the air, which I'm not entirely sure is a good thing. However, with only a few dollars a month from you, your kindness will allow us to continue creating new programming each week, which apparently some of you curiously enjoy. And should you have the desire to give even more, you might even receive a gift from Miss Tangella. I think not. Please visit the website below to learn more. Thank you. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by... The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. Batman! My favorite part. You know, I wish they would use that song. It's Neil Hefty, right, who did that song? Yes. yes. Right? I wish they would use that song in the movies. With the children singing. Yeah. It is children singing, right? 
Sounds like children's song. I don't know. I don't know. All right. Welcome back to the show. We are Creature Features. We are watching The Disappearance of Flight 412 with our friend, the bargain store, Batman. And uh, I've got more questions for Batman. But first, let's talk about this film. They ship the astronauts off to a secret island to convince them they did not see a UFO. Uh, no. Yeah, this is the same plot as Hangar 18, is it not? Absolutely. You know, if... If Batman had seen a UFO, I don't think they would try to ship him off to an island. They've tried. They've tried? All right. All right. Well, we haven't even approached the Bruce Wayne angle on that, so we'll, we'll save that for later. Robin, I want to know why we do not have Robin here tonight. Well, I keep losing my Robins, and I got to say there's a current hole to fill, not to mention the last one. We lost him from a hand grenade. So... You have to constantly replace Robins because... They blow up. Oh. They get dismembered. They just walk out. One guy just walked out the first day. He couldn't take it. My goodness. I, I didn't know that this was like a, a job position. I figured it was just uh, your nephew or something like that. So you're not exactly a dynamic duo at the moment, right? With no Robin? No. Well, there's my wife. Nothing can kill her. Oh, so she fills in for Robin. Absolutely. No. Oh, how she how she look in the outfit? Looks great in yeah. the outfit. All right. Well, maybe it should be like like you know a a a couples type thing instead of like the whole dynamic duo. No. Well, you know she's a strong woman, and I like my gig. I'd rather just have a Robin. So I suppose she wears the leotard in your family, eh? Yeah. Yeah, right. she wears the leotards right. in the family. Right, right. right. So, uh, anyways, let's get back to this film. And when we come back, I want to hear about some of the villains that you've encountered in your career as the uh, bargain store Batman. All right, off we go. Back to the disappearance of Flight 412. I'm getting tired of saying the name of that movie, so I'm going to say, let's get back to that UFO movie. See you soon. So, when Blanca Vista told you to check that sector, you didn't question them at all? Ask them. Hey, fellas, what are we looking for? It's obvious. They wanted an independent observation. Obvious to you, maybe. Isn't that right, Bishop? When are you guys going to feed us? We'll get around to it. Ferguson, how did you get into the Air Force Academy? I was appointed. Congressman? You like what you do? Sure. Is he any good at it? He's excellent. And how do you think he achieved this uh, level of excellence? My training. The United States government laid out a lot of money for that training. I appreciate it. That's good. Because when you got through the academy, Ferguson, amongst other things, you became an officer and a gentleman. Yes, he did. Now, where is all this leading to? You're told, and it's the truth, that you're the best this country has to offer. All that's required is that you measure up. To what? The primary obligation of a military officer. Which is? Bishop, what are your laws, these lie? You questioning my integrity? Not at all. Just your level of cooperation. With what? What am I supposed to cooperate with? Why don't you get to the point? He can't. He's not questioning our integrity. He's asking us to dispense with it. Aren't you? All right, Bishop. How did you get into the academy? Hey, fellas. Coffee? Sandwiches? Sandwiches? Help yourself. Cheers, here. Okay, listen, listen, I'll trade you my bologna fritz. <laughs> hey, thanks. Hey. Where's the coffee? <laughs> yeah, a little cream. Okay. Want a sandwich? Yeah, please. Good. Fresh. Okay. Who saw the flying saucers? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, who saw them? Cliff? Oh, no, I, uh... No, I didn't. Tony? I... I, I just saw some glimpses. Good, good. Then we can dispense with that, huh? What about the jets that were dispensed with? Uh-uh, unconfirmed. Hey, how come you guys won't buy our story? How come? Hmm? Because it sounds just like a story. We've dealt with these things before. Qualified people making unqualified statements. And what you thought you saw couldn't happen. There's no evidence to make us believe that it could. So, you didn't see it. Why don't you finish that sentence? We don't get out of here until we swallow that, right, Buster? Well, the only thing I'm going to swallow is coffee. Hey, Bullseye! Hey! How much longer do we have to put up with this? I don't know. Maybe we don't have to. This is a restricted area. You get that light out of my face. Sorry, sir. This is a restricted area. I'm Colonel Moore. This is Major Dunning. The 458. I suggest that you call whoever's in charge here and tell him that he has two additional guests. You'll understand what I mean. I've got a Colonel Moore and a Major Dunning here at the main gate, sir. Look, I, don't, I don't know what else we can tell you. I mean, I don't know what else we can give you. I mean, you guys can say anything you want, anyway. Send them in. How malfunction? Yeah, just say that. Just write it down. Malfunction? I, I don't care, okay? Well, that's pretty generous. No, the whole thing was a malfunction. From the time we left Whitney to the time we got here, it's just one great big malfunction. I'm Trotman. I'd like to see some ID. Well, you would. Well, we'd like to see some of yours. What can I do for you, Colonel? You're holding four of my men. So? We need some. This, this whole act here wouldn't be because of a UFO sighting now, would it? It's a UFO situation, Colonel. When these things occur, it's policy to check out all the personnel involved. What do you mean, check out? Piece the whole thing together. Oh, I see. You're, um, you're investigating, is that it? We're talking to your men. Can I see them? Not just yet. When? Colonel, this is a matter of national security. Oh, oh come on. That's getting to be a very thin umbrella. No, I know about national security, mister. But you can't put that label on everything. We get these assignments all the time. It's routine. Routine or not, I'm not leaving here without my men. Well, in that case, if one of the two of you make yourselves comfortable. I'll have some coffee sent in. We'll have your men out as soon as possible. And how long will that be? As long as it takes.
Those were the guys that I was involved with two years ago. S.I.D. Now, he's probably on the phone right now to Enright, telling him what a pair of clowns we are. If you need me, I'll be in the phone truck. All I have to do is to get to the aircraft. Raise Whitney on the radio, and the Colonel can do the rest. If someone comes, stop him. Don't rock the boat. Don't make waves. You figure that's the way that majors get to be colonels? A certain lieutenant I knew stuck his nose in two years ago where it didn't belong. The lieutenant is now a shoe salesman in Cincinnati. That kind of advancement in life I don't need. You're concerned about your position. That's right. Well, I'm concerned about more than that. Center. This is Digger Control. This is Trotman. Pass me through to Digger Command. Hello. Yes. Put him through. Trotman. Yes, sir. I'm sorry to bother you. But we've had a development out here that required my own initiative. I thought you should be notified. Now go on. You ordered this. Well, yes, sir. The circumstances dictated it. If I had refused the entry, they may have gone to another authority. Yes, I see. Well, then you did well, Trotman. How are things going with that crew? Well, we just about finished with the men, and we should have all of the contradictory evidence we need by tomorrow morning. You're very efficient, Trotman. Thank you, sir. Uh, just remember, no violence. I wouldn't dream of it, sir. Guests of the show stay at Hotel E on Courthouse Square in Santa Rosa. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. I'm beginning to grow weary of this job. You hear anything? Yeah. At least one of them has some guts. I'll tell Trotman. This should be interesting.
have a right to go to my aircraft. Did you hear me? Yes, I did. I have a right to go to my aircraft. I have a right to call my commanding officer and tell him what's going on. What is going on? My men and I are being held against our will. Negative. We are conducting a debriefing under orders. You will not be released until you are debriefed. Debriefing? That doesn't make any sense. Doesn't it? You flew some missions in Vietnam. You were debriefed after every one. Yes or no? Yes. Then why not here? Do you think it would make a difference? We're not dealing with the enemy here. Do you know that? Really? Do you know everything about national policy? Or what the military complex is up against? Do you? to say, do, write, whatever, we'll do it. All right? With anything you want. You want us to sign anything, with anything, record anything, we'll agree to anything. What do you want us to do? Huh? Now, we're getting somewhere. Okay, Roy, let's change the subject, shall we? If you got an order through the proper channels prohibiting you from discussing matters pertaining to national security, would you obey it? Of course. What is your attitude about such an order? <coughs> orders are orders. We know that. I want an opinion. I would think that the Air Force would have a pretty good reason. A practical reason? Why don't you just, just give me an order? What's that? I'm Air Force! I'm not some wild-eyed kook looking to get on a six o'clock news. Do you understand? You don't have to try to convince me. Just give me an order, something on paper, something I can show my men. We're speaking hypothetically. 
No, you weren't. You want me to shut up? Give me an order. No, that's not it at all. I want an order now. Sit down. Sit down. Now. Colonel Moore to have his men back now. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Stay tuned. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to Creature Features. We are watching The Disappearance of Flight 412 with Bargain Batman. Store. Bargain Store Batman. Right? No. He's he's almost as good as Batman. In fact, if you were to compare the two, I would say you couldn't tell the difference, right? Thank you. Maybe, maybe. Right, right. Anyways, uh, this film, you know, Glenn Ford was a famous, famous actor. How did he get stuck in such a terrible film like this i think you needed the money <laughs> oh well i suppose that's uh that would be one uh, compelling reason to do a film like this anyways uh we're gonna wrap up the film soon but uh i wanted to talk to you about uh the the villains that uh batman encounters the kind that you've encountered the joker never heard of him the riddler nope penguin got nothing how about catwoman Oh, Catwoman? Have you ever been to her house? <gasps> oh, she's, uh, she hoards cats, I presume. Absolutely, about oh. 500 cats. Oh, my goodness. So, you know, she could do like a kitty litter commercial, could she not? <laughs> Absolutely. Right, right, right. All right, well, have you ever encountered any villains, supervillains here in Bodega Bay? The fishmonger. Fishmonger? Yeah, the only way I can get rid of them was the uh, shark repellent. Oh, you have actual shark repellent. Oh, that's wonderful. It's this. It feels empty. Because you use it on the fishmonger. Fish use it on the fishmonger. Bat sprays oceanic repellents. This is wonderful. Is this something anybody could buy, or is this only sold to Batman? Uh, I'm not sure. It's a uh, uh, right. secret. You find this on Amazon Prime, I assume, or something like that. Very nice. Very nice. So, uh, fighting crime. Any injuries as you fight crime? Well, you know, the suit rides up a bit. Um, had a couple of injuries uh, in, down below. Oh, no. So, kicked in the wrong place, I imagine. Right. Oh, no, that must have been painful. Well, but you've got, like, armor to protect that uh, region, do you not? Yeah, but uh, when you're in these various positions. Uh, ah, certain angle. Right. No, we had the same problem in England with armor. And you know, people shooting arrows between the joints. It was a terrible thing that we had to invent chain mail for. That's right. You, know, you might want to try some chain mail. I it might actually help. got some down oh. here. All right, all right. Well, what do you say we finish up this film? And then when we come back, we're going to uh, find out what the bargain store Batman is doing next. Right? Right. All right. Off we go. Back to the end of the disappearance of Flight 412. 
and uh, we will see you on the other side of the credits. Don't go away. All right, let's go. my men for 18 hours. Now they're mine. Dunning and I are going to fly them out of here. Well, that'll be fine. I'll see that your car gets back to Whitney. control disappeared as easily as it had come into existence, leaving Pete Moore a choice. He didn't hesitate. What do we tell General Enright? Now, don't worry about it. I'm going in with him. Pete, huh? I wish you'd drop it. For your sake. Now, now, don't throw away a career for some lousy UFOs. That's not what it's about. No? Then what? Oh, well, for one thing, I'd say, uh, I'd say sanctions. Sanctions? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, this, this whole setup here. You know, those men were ordered to work my people over, and I'm going to find out who and why. Look, Colonel. Yeah? I, uh... I'm not going to see anybody about anything. I'll just give the general my regards. All right? How are you feeling? A little tired. Yeah. What's all this? At ease, man. Well, General, I'm going to tell you the wildest story you've ever heard. I've just read it. Now, Pete, I knew you had initiative, but uh, you fellas look like you've been pulled through a wine press. Is that Trotman's report? Yes, it is. What do you think? Well, very thorough. Quite an investigation. Oh, yes, it was thorough. But there was no investigation. It's all here. Yeah, the men are here. 412 is here. The report is here. But where are the two Marine jets? <laughs> what Marine jets? The ones I saw disappear, sir. You are, uh... Captain Riggs, sir. Oh, yes. Well, I see nothing here about two jets. 
Then, sir, you're right in the middle of a con job. I see. Captain, you did mention this during the investigation. At least once every half hour, sir. Excuse me, gentlemen. Will you uh, wait inside? Yes, sir. This brief moment of tranquility has been brought to you by Nightscape. Relax and sleep better every single night with this and other videos from our free YouTube channel. Learn more by visiting nightscape.co today. Colonel Moore and his men? Yes, sir. Colonel, is this report complete? Yes, sir. Not one detail has been left out? No, sir. Well, I see no mention here of a visual sighting on the disappearance of two Marine jets scrambled by Black Vista. What about that, Colonel? Those are, uh, reports are under separate cover, sir. You mean to say you couldn't connect one with the other? Of course I did. Oh, you did? Well, why didn't you do something about it? That's not my job, Colonel. Well, wait a minute. Those two missing jets, they are confirmed? Yes, sir. When? Yesterday, about 12.45. Yesterday? Then why did you hold my men all that time? You know, those reports were probably written one hour after you started questioning them. My orders dictate my methods. Bull. When I get my orders, Captain, I follow them. The last time I heard that, it came from the docket at Nuremberg. I wouldn't make hasty comparisons. Just what are your orders, Colonel? To intimidate? To bend? To distort the truth so that nobody would recognize it after you're finished with it? General. What? You know the policy. I don't. What is the policy? to investigate any sightings of unidentified flying objects by Air Force personnel and determine the accuracy of those sightings. Yes. And what do you do about it? The reports are sent up. Sent up to who? That's classified. You know, I'm not a scientist, and neither are you. But it seems to me that you've got to sort of take a, a scientific approach to this. Either you prove these things exist, or you prove they don't exist. But you don't pretend they're not there. Who sees these reports? Pete, you're entering an area that doesn't concern you. Oh, Jeff. I'm, I'm drawing a line here, and you don't cross over it. What line? Policy? Colonel, we don't set the policy. We act on it. We make our reports, and that's it. Any action to be taken comes from somewhere else. Where? Will you men please wait outside? Sit down. Now, frankly, Pete, the Air Force doesn't have the time or the funds for tracking down flying saucers. 
Yes, but they do have the funds to maintain places like Digger Base. Look, sir, my men told their story as straight as they could based on what they saw. Or thought they saw. It doesn't make any difference, really. Of course. How? You get a directive that tells you what to do, gives you no latitude at all, and you know what you are. You're nothing but a laundry processor. Pete, we don't need any of that. General, what this man does is pointless. By instinct, I know that his attitude doesn't serve the interests of this country, its people, or its government. Colonel, officers are not supposed to act on instinct. They act on orders, and yours are to lay off. something worthwhile. Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm just as concerned over this as you are. Yeah. More so. What I'm going to show you now is strictly off the record. It is not to leave this room. <clears throat> this is all we found of the missing marine jets. Where was this? About 80 miles east of Blanca Vista. Well, where are the crews? We're still looking. Did Trotman know about this? He didn't need to. It has nothing to do with his job. General, does this sort of cover-up go on all the time? Pete, now look at that picture. That's the only piece of wreckage we've got. That's it. That's all there is. There's no way in the world we can explain this. And it's not the policy of the military to create panic. General, what are we creating? Thanks. Colonel, we're sorry that we made things rough for you. For me? Yeah, we've talked it over, sir. This whole thing, it just isn't worth it. We'll drop it if you say so, sir. No, don't do that. Remember, policies change. Yeah. Yeah, but not attitudes. But they don't last forever. Only as long as they're expedient. Moore would have pursued the disappearance of Flight 412 if he could have found some place to pursue it. No one cared. And the only reason he could ever find why they didn't care was because they were afraid to cope with it, even when it happened again. Four months later, a similar exercise. This time, everyone was there from the top down. Planes scrambled. Objects were sighted. Everyone was a witness. It made no difference. Everyone was debriefed, the file closed, the incident forgotten, much as was Flight 412. The fate of the men concerned with 412 has been curious indeed. Major Dunning was promoted to Colonel. Lieutenant Podrisky, in return for his cooperation, was advanced to Captain and is presently serving a three-year tour in the Pentagon. Captain Bishop is still a captain and is serving a two-year tour in the Canal Zone. Pete Moore was passed over three times for promotion and retired at minimum age.
And that brings the CIA down on the disappearance of Flight 412. I think this movie was somewhat rather stupid, don't you? I don't think we're going to show this one again. It ended like it began, and it seems to be like this. Glenn Ford, you could do much better than this. Please, do so. Anyways, uh, yeah. So anyways, how you doing, Mr. Batman? Really good. Uh, I'd like to give you a gift. Oh! This is your own... My own Batmobile. Batmobile. This is wonderful. No, I love this. This uh, is amazing. D'Angelo, just stay away from my Batmobile. That's a reasonable request, right? He gifted you a Batmobile. Wonderful. So, uh, what are you doing next, Mr. Batman? Uh, when I'm out fighting crime after that, I go down and I help out at the Redwood Gospel Mission in Santa Rosa. Oh, they do good work. Yes. And so you do good work. We all help out there. That's it, wonderful. That's wonderful. How can we learn more about that? SRmission.org. SRmission.org. And we can find out everything about Redwood Gospel Mission. Maybe see a photo of Bruce Wayne when he's out of the uh, Batman suit, right? Right. Possibly. Right, right. Wonderful. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show, Batman. You're wonderful. And uh, thank you for uh, curing uh, all our ills in Bodega Bay here. You heard about the fishmonger, did you not? That's quite a, quite a tale. Quite a tale. All right. And uh, next time you're in town, come see us. As far as you guys go, thank you so much for watching the show and staying up so late. We know some of you have to get up early tomorrow, and this is a bit of a burden watching our show, but uh, we will make it better next week for this bad movie we showed tonight by showing a better movie, and I, I don't think we'll have a better guest, but uh, we will have uh, more of this one back in her regular clothing, I hope. We'll see. Anyways, see you next time. We love you. So, uh, Mr. Batman, you know, I'm thinking with you short on a Robin, maybe I can fill in some time. Nah, I don't have an ejection seat.